I was terrified. As soon as the, the, the sun went down, I knew they'd be there. Jane Nelm says throughout her life she's had constant visitors and not of this earth. She says it all started in 1973 when a brilliant white light appeared in her bedroom window one night. As I pulled the drape aside, all of a sudden there were five beings this tall all around me. Nelms has drawn what she remembers of her encounters. These are the five beings she says came in quickly that night and took her. I could not move, couldn't do a thing, and I was trying to grab the railings to stop myself from being taken. They had total control. She says they carried her to their ship outside, and one of them even spoke. This is the being that talked to me. He said in a very monotoned voice, Jane, it is your time to come. And I said, I am not going anywhere. He said, why not you come with us? I said, because people need me here on earth. I have family, I have friends. It is your time to come now. So they took me and I was on that ship and it wasn't until 1993 when I was hypnotized that I found out what they were doing. Nelm says she didn't speak of that for years until she met others at a support group near Dallas who claimed similar experiences. When she moved to Carrollton, Nelm says the aliens followed her and came to others. She remembers a frantic, frightening phone call from a neighbor. She said three different types of beings came down the hallway and the fans started reversing, lights were flashing and there were these little balls of light just flying around everywhere. She said one of the beings was so tall it could hardly get through the door. Nelm says those beings abducted her neighbor just as they had her before. Why? She says for scientific research. I know this is crazy but this is what happens. They examined her, she said, when she was on the ship, the mother ship, she said there were all kinds of different species of aliens. Some of them were wearing civilian clothes. She said some of them talked in other languages. She said the ones that came over to her and um, told her that they weren't going to harm her. They just wanted to do some examinations. She says she confronted those same aliens that night and even has evidence they were here. These are the fingerprints off of the car. Nelm says these long, skinny markings are the alien's fingerprints that she dusted, and she has pictures as well. This alien was in a fetal position as it tumbled through the window, through solid material. Here's his head and his eye socket. And this is one hand here, another hand here. It's almost like an x-ray. Nelm says she had to overcome her fear, so she went right out and met them. And I went out into the backyard and I faced one of them, very tall, and in the dark he had really glowing eyes. Um, and he was scanning, he was stood there, he was just scanning like this. Just like that. And he'd look up, and I was about 25 foot from him, and I said, you don't scare me. She says they left that night, but not for long. Passed away this Jane Nelm says one of the most interesting encounters happened one night near Winsboro. She, along with others from the UFO support group, gathered at a neighbor's home in the country. We all saw this brilliant white light, and no matter wherever a couple of seconds later it would be we'd see it from another window and uh, Wayne goes oh no he goes they're all around the house so one of the guys goes out to his car to get a packet of cigarettes he comes back the color of this paper here without his cigarettes and standing by his car is one of the greys the small aliens Nelm says her husband was in the backyard, so she stepped outside to check on him. We hear this snapping of branches and crash, boom. All of a sudden we hear, 
And as that ship took off, it snapped off all these branches in the woods. And I went back into the house. She says the aliens never came inside the house that night, but were observing them from all around. Nelm says somebody else has been observing her too, men in black. She believes the government agents do exist and attempted to silence her after she went on a radio station in Dallas. Nelm says one came to her one day while she was shopping. And he was all in black. Black hat, black sunglasses, black suit. He was probably six foot four. And no matter what aisle I went down, he would be right there. And then I got some phone calls. Nelm says she told them she will not be silenced. In fact, that's why she's talking to us, wanting others to know. People have to experience stuff for themselves. And it doesn't bother me if, if, if people don't believe me. All I know is what, what has happened. Perhaps the hardest story to believe is what she says happened to her in the 1980s. My husband and I hadn't had relationships for a while. And I was pregnant, four and a half months pregnant. And uh, everything was fine. You know, I got over the morning sickness and the baby was doing okay. And my husband was out of town and things were going on, strange things. And uh, I went to bed that night and I thought, Things aren't right now. You know, this is not right. I feel, I, I sensed something was near the house, you know, and I didn't know what. So I went to bed pregnant, four and a half months pregnant. And I woke up that morning and I'd had a terrible night. Like it was a nightmare, a literal nightmare. And I knew when I woke up that morning that I was no longer pregnant. She believes the aliens took her baby. Now says she's not sure where the beings come from and what exactly they're doing here, but she intends on finding out. And she says the aliens have chosen her. People are afraid. And I'm going to be there to help them. So what exactly did they say? They said that um, there will be a time when people will see more of us and that um, uh, you will be working with us. You will help those people. And I have no fear now. Jane Nelms probably doesn't fit your stereotype of someone who claims close encounters with UFOs and aliens. She's lived a prosperous life all over the world and has settled in East Texas with her husband. Her father was an intelligence officer for the British Aircraft Corporation. He was even knighted by the Queen of England for his service to the country. Jane is also an artist and a writer. She's kept diaries of her alleged encounters, which she may one day try to get published. But of course, it's up to you to decide if you believe in her stories. Courtney Lane, KLTV 7 News.